Listen, I'm glad you're here today. Today we're starting a new series entitled Under the Influence. Um, I, um, I can't share everything. It's too much to share. I'm still processing everything. But this past week I had an opportunity to go out of town to a conference that literally changed my life. Um, it literally, it, I mean, it literally shifted everything about my thinking, about how I thought about myself, how I thought about life. And, uh, and while I was there, this thought came to me influence and being under an influence. And so the question that began to come to my mind was, what is influencing me, but what's influencing others? And, and I'm not just talking about, oh, the Holy Spirit influences me. Yeah, we could talk about that. But, but like, what's really influencing you? Is it a friend? Is it a family member? Is it a old mindset? Is it a current situation? Is it a a problem? Is it a pain? Is it something from your past? Is it, are you influenced by your perceived future? And you're under pressure trying to figure out how you're going to do next and, and you, you don't realize that maybe the influence that you're having is causing you to move in a certain way. And so it just kind of dawned on me and it began, the Lord began to speak to me about this. And so I just want to take the next few weeks talking about being under the influence. Now, we're not talking about uh, leaving here and getting uh, intoxicated, uh, we're, so don't turn up after service. Uh, we, we're, we're talking about a different kind of influence here, uh, but, but pray there's a blessing to you. So listen, I want you to grab your Bibles, and I want you to go to Genesis chapter 6. I'm going to read one, one verse this morning, and then we're going to get into this. Genesis chapter 6, verse 22. Genesis 6, 22. Genesis is going to be the first book of the Bible. It's going to be the first book right in, right in the beginning of it. And uh, chapter 6, verse 22. When you have it, say, I have it. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. That's all I got. Noah did everything. Somebody say everything. everything. Just as God commanded him. I don't have a title. I don't. Um, I'm, I'm going to have just a transparent moment and then I'm, I'm going to get into preaching. Sometimes y'all don't understand the pressure that comes with this. What text? What the title going to be? Did I use that title already? <laughs> Did I say that? How am I going to introduce this? How, oh, no, listen, I'm just talking today. All right? That's, y'all cool with that? Yeah. Noah did everything. Somebody say everything. everything. God commanded him. We have problems in our world today. That's not new news to you. That's not something that's a, a wow moment. It is something that you know. We have all kinds of problems. We have economic problems or financial problems. We have problems in our political system. We have problems with our education system. As a matter of fact, let's give it up for all the teachers who went down to the state house saying, listen, we need smaller classrooms. And, and I, I'm serious. Why do we pay people who contribute to our future less money? It, it, let's be real. They have our kids for all day, five days a week, most of the year, and you can't pay them more than 35? We could do a little better than that. See, but the problem is we don't value things until the, the person or the individual says, look, you're going to have to value me. You've got to do more than this. It's interesting that they're just not educators. Now they have to be uh, bodyguards. Now, we're discussing whether they're going to carry guns or not carry guns. We're trying to figure out 
what are we going to do about this? And so it's a lot, but we have problems. I don't want to talk about the state house and teachers, but we have problems in our educational system. We have problems in our marriages. We have problems in our minds with the way we make decisions. We have problems in, in, with racism, whether it white or black or Latino or, you know, what should we do and you know, who should be here and who should be there. And we have all these problems and it's the white man against the black man, against the Latino man, against the African man, against the European man. It's Jesus. Is this white or Jesus Jewish? Does Jesus have blue eyes? Does he have blonde hair? Does he have an afro? Does he have dreads? Does, we got all these problems. We have spiritual problems. We got problems in the church. You got problems. Everybody in the room has problems. We, our world has so many different problems. And I thought about this one day. I said, God, you're so smart that you understood that in order for someone to come into their purpose, they first had to be a problem. I hate that Adam sinned, but I don't know if we could really find our purpose in life if we didn't have a problem. God designed you to see life a certain way, to respond in life a certain way. And so when we have these problems, is it that God has, is it that God has allowed us to see these problems because he's touching our heart to solve them? Or are we simply supposed to look at poverty and hunger and say, oh, I'm sorry that you're hungry. Wish I could do something for you. Or do you simply go in your pocket and take out $5 and give them something to eat? Isn't it interesting that we see problems, but people don't respond to them? It's interesting how we have all kinds of issues, but do you know why you only respond to certain issues and other issues you don't? It's because you're wired to solve problems that you see. And the ones that don't move you doesn't mean you are heartless or careless. It just simply means maybe I'm not wired to be the one to solve that problem. It's interesting that even in our world we have all these problems and God designed problems to be solved. And so he says in Genesis 6 that God begins to share his heart with us. And this is one of the very few times you really hear God open up as much in scripture about his people. And the Bible says that God looks throughout the earth and he's hurt because he sees all of the wickedness that's happening. He's so hurt by his creation that the thought comes, I'm just going to wipe it all out and start all over. That is different from, because, you know, for example, in Genesis, when, when Abraham and Lot split, uh, Lot says, I'm going to go to the plains of Sodom. And he goes there, and you know, a few chapters later, God sees the wickedness of Sodom and destroys Sodom, the city. And you see other places that God says, destroy that city, destroy that place. But we've never seen God say, destroy the world. He's so hurt by the people he's created to the point that in their heart is so much wickedness that he says, the only way I can handle this is to start over. That's, that's pretty heavy. That, that's pretty serious when God is so hurt by what we've done. But I wonder if he's hurting now. Because the Bible says that after the flood, he puts a rainbow in the sky and he says, and this is a, just a reminder that I won't destroy the earth by water again. So every time I see a rainbow, I go, Lord, I just want to thank you <laughs> that it's not going, the earth is not going to be destroyed by flood again. And so we, we see this. And, and so, but the Bible also says this, that in the last days, men will become lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Children will become ungrateful. We will become lovers of money more than lovers of God. It goes and says that we would be deceitful. We would do all kinds of stuff because in our hearts are, it's just wickedness. And if we are honest with ourselves, even though you want to say that to your neighbor, there's some things that you have to pray about constantly that come into your heart. And, and, and sometimes if we're honest, sometimes you wish you could do things, but you can't do it because you would lose your witness. You wish you could tell somebody off, but you knew if you told them off the way you wanted to tell them off, they wouldn't believe you had Jesus at all. 
So there's, there, there's some things in our hearts that we all have to deal with. Sometimes we have a struggle and a pull to something that will destroy us. And if we don't stop it, we're going to find ourselves down the wrong road and, and, and doing the wrong thing. And, and this is why we really have to stop being judgmental in church. Because you really don't know what your neighbor is going through. You really don't know what they're struggling with. You really, yeah, they're dressed up or they look nice and their hair's done or they got a haircut or they have an attire or having some nice clean shoes or a suit or, or, or jeans and some nice pumps or whatever it is. But you don't know what they're really going through. Yeah, their hands are lifted and they're singing praise. But down the inside, they're saying, God, please let this be the day you say something to me because I don't know if I can go on another day if you don't deal with my heart. And so we have all kinds of problems. This is why God created the church, so that we could help with the problem. Not just simply come hear a message. Please hear me today. Not to just come hear a message that says, oh, Pastor, that was good, or that was okay. I give him about a, a C on that message, or I give him a B on that one. Ooh, the law was on him today. He gets an A plus for that one. And instead of rating messages or rating the praise team and rating the hospitality and rating how things are moving, the question is, if we rated your heart and your praise and your response to God, what would that look like? Would that be be a C? Would that be an F? Would that be an A plus? God says when you come in my presence, the Bible says it into my gifts with thanksgiving to my course of praise, but we all have issues in coming here. We're saying God help me. I got problems. And if we're honest, our hearts are under some serious influences. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a person who's influencing you. Your job is influencing. Your circle is influencing you. Your thoughts are influencing you. A conversation is influencing you. And you may be saying, Pastor, nah, I'm good. No, everybody in this room, including myself, is under some kind of influence. The question is, what is the influence? So God has this problem and he's hurt by it. And I wonder, are you hurt by what hurts God? Or are you hurt by what only hurts you? And so God says, look at all of this wickedness. Why, why are we mad at our, and I'm not throwing stones here. Please, please hear my heart. I'm not throwing stones. We have problems we just want to talk about. I'm tired of going to meetings just in general. Oh, could you come to this meeting? Or could you meet with us or do this? Yeah, sure. I want to come. I want to be a part. I want to be in the community. What are we doing? And it's just always talk about doing something. This is why, I'm going to deal with this, this is why, listen to me, the church, this is why the church has to be stronger than what it is. I went to a conference, blew my mind. The owner of this company is getting ready to build a building, debt-free, Paul, $55 million cash. Okay, Paul, $55 million cash. Why can't we even get 5% of the people to give to the God they say they love? You know why? Because the church has done a bad job of showing you what happens with the resources. So the first thing you think is it goes into someone's pocket when really it could be that they're doing things to set up the future. We have to get into a place where we have to start saying, God, if I trust you and I believe in you, I got to start putting my money where my mouth is. I'm not apologizing about this because we can't do we can't solve the problem if we broke. I'm, a, I'm going, I said, I, I don't have no notes, as you can see. We can't solve the problem if we're broke. What would it look like if the brook brought in 55 million? I'll tell you exactly what it would look like. 
I'm telling you, we will be able to start so many different things. We could build our own subdivision, not have to worry about other stuff and build housing for people, affordable housing, where people can say, Pastor, thank you. Thank the Brook for allowing us to have our first home. And now we're building wealth and legacy for my family. It could look like a school. It could look like a daycare. It could look like a gymnasium. It could look like a family life center. I'm not taught. I did not mention sanctuary. I said lifestyle change events and moments that we can do it. But we can't do it. We keep running our pennies together. I need people to start thinking on a Benjamin level saying, God, I'm going to give what I can give because I understand that my giving solves a problem. We have so many people who think that. So he says we got a problem. We got a problem. Here it is. Only one person I've seen receives favor from me, and that's Noah. So really the people who are righteous sometimes are the minority. But you can't allow the culture to influence your witness. Ooh, see, see what happens is Noah is among everyone. He, he sees what they see. He, he's living in the same place. They're living in the city. They're living. But, however, he's not moved by it because he's righteous. So God says, I want to use Noah. Number one, God, right, this has a problem. The second thing, if you take a note, is this. He has a plan. The plan is destroy the world. You can't change his plan. The question is, are you going to be a part of it? So he says, no, you're going to be a part of my plan. So the third thing he has to do, I feel back this this morning, he's going to choose a person. Some of y'all didn't get that. Normally, Baptist preachers, they always got like, they have like four points, three, four points. They all of them start with the same letter. Yeah, problem. No offense. I'm just saying. We got a problem. We got a plan. Now he has a person. God is calling you to something bigger than you. Okay. If I said, I'm a, I'm gonna, I want to test your thoughts right now. If I said God wants to do something great in your life right now, he's, choosing, he's, he's selecting you, he's hand-selected you to do something that changed the lives of so many people. Question is, are you thinking Columbia or are you thinking the world? Some of y'all only thinking locally. I'm only thinking about, I'm just going to change Northeast. I'm just going to change Irmo. I'm just going to change downtown. I'm just going to change Columbia. That's all you're thinking, not realizing God has given you a platform to change the world because what he's speaking to Noah is not something local. It is something international. Here it is. Moses needs you to do something. What is it, God? I need you to build a big boat. Uh, God, um, there's never been a boat built that big. God, that doesn't make sense. Why are we going to build a boat and uh, it doesn't rain like that? God, that boat's too big. But because you said it, I'm going to do everything you told me to do. God not only gives him the plan, but gives him the material. Please understand this. You cannot build what God told you to build with the wrong material. Okay, so some of y'all are trying to build it, but you're trying to build it with the materials you want to build it with. It's not going to last the storm. So he says, depending on the storm, you need a certain kind of material around you. There's certain things you need that you're trying to do that certain people can't do. Uh, okay. There's certain people, oh, I love them. So it doesn't matter. They're not the material. They're not, they don't have what it takes to get that done. I love you. See, just like the praise team, you, you may love to sing. Yeah, you may love to sing, but do you have the material? Do you have the voice? Can, can you hold the note? Can you? We don't need you all over the place. We don't need you changing keys and and, and, and sliding in and stuff and dropping out of things. We need you to hit it. We need you to hold it, right? You don't have the material. It doesn't mean you don't love singing, but if you stop putting people just because you're trying to be nice, what begins to happen is you begin to have a subpar uh, a product because they don't have it. And, you gotta, and sometimes you just got to have a reality talk to somebody that you just don't have it. Like, you, like you, you really can't sing. I don't know if anyone ever told you that. 
I'm not going to lie to you. You cannot. Not even in the shower, even with the echo and the, and the none of that. You don't, you don't have, <laughs> you don't have it. Put me at the door. I want to hug people. Mm-mm. No, you, you, you can't do that. Here it is. In order for you to get to the next level, you have to look like it before you get there. You have to be the manager before you become the manager. You have, you have to be the leader before you become the leader. You have to, the Bible never says a man who finds a good woman. The Bible says a man who finds a wife. So the question is, did she become a wife before or after the ring? Y'all get that later. See, the problem is you are it before you are it. And see, when you it before you are it, you don't care about titles because the titles don't change you because you were that before you got there. It's on, on, that's the only people who kind of gain value in titles. Yes, I'm the such and such. No, titles don't mean nothing. Take the title. I'm still me. And I can still do what I do with or without the title. So here we are. He says, Moses, you're the guy. I'm choosing. Here's the plan. Build it. But God, you're telling me to build something I've never seen. Oh, isn't that interesting? God asked you to build something that's never been seen before? Question, is it that you haven't seen it? See, God wants to open you up. But some of us are under the influence of the lack of understanding. Some of us are under the influence of being unexposed. Okay, what do you mean? If you don't know that's available, you operate with a lid and you don't even know it. And you step out of your norm and get exposed to something and you're like, that's normal? So some people are, are, are limited by fear and the lack of understanding and they don't even know it. They call it faith and wisdom. So, okay, so here it is. You call it wisdom when reality is fear. Mm, that's just too far. No, you scared. And if you scared, say you're scared. See, but here's the problem. If you're not afraid, it ain't faith. <laughs> oh, no one told you that, right? Okay, no. See, because we preach it like, if God tells you to do it, you're going to have faith, and you're just going to walk out there. Moses got to the Red Sea. He said, God, there's a large body of water in front of us. And if you didn't know, the Egyptians are behind us. Uh, what am I supposed to do? God says, Moses, stretch your rod. He says, all right, I don't know what a rod has to do with the water, but I'm going to do what you told me. He stretches the rod. And he says, all right. Now, look, he and God are having a conversation about the problem. Moses turned around and says, people, today God is going to do great things among you. God, now, I don't know exactly what you're going to do here, but whatever you're going to do, I hope you do like quick, fast, and in a hurry. But don't worry. Today, you're going to see God work. You don't know how many times leaders stand before you declaring faith, saying, God, I don't know what you're going to do with this. Trust ye the Lord. You don't understand. And when you come there, that's when you start operating that faith because there's no more you. Because if it was you, you would step out there. But because it's fear, fear, you saying, God, I can't move. That's when you know you have faith. Do you let the fear influence you? Or do you let the faith influence you? And so now I can't do that. Why not? I'm scared. Great. I'm glad you're scared. That's exactly where you need to be. Now do it. Because we are afraid, here it is, of failing. <laughs> okay, let me see. If every job I had was a failure, woo I got a long list of failures. I already got a long list of failures. But if I just had to choose just by jobs because I didn't stay there, that's a long list of failures. But I realized this. What you're calling fa failure is sometimes clarity. 
That didn't work. Next. That didn't work out the way I thought. Next. So now when somebody asks you, do you want to do this? You can say, oh, no. I already know that ain't going to work for me. But you saw it as failure versus getting this clarity. So you're afraid to try different stuff. I told y'all in a Bible study, I want to travel the world. I've traveled, you know, out of the country. The only place I've really been is Toronto, Canada, outside of the country. I want to travel outside the country. I want to travel. I want to see the world. I want to go to Paris and Italy. And I want to go all those places, you know. I want to go to the, you know, the Bahamas I've never been in, in, in Jamaica and all that. I've been to Puerto Rico, but that's still part of the U.S. So, uh, <laughs> um, you know, all that, right? But here's the problem. I have to start, I realize this, I have to start eating food other than, hello, Chick-fil-A. Yeah. I'm going to have to go, <laughs> right? I got to go to Olive Garden and I got to do more than just the four meat lasagna. Yeah. This, um, this may sound humorous, but I am so serious. Because if I get to Italy, they may not have a Chick-fil-A they may not have a burger. What pasta am I going? I'm not hearing what I'm saying. If I go to Africa and they want to serve me a dish, do I go, I ain't eating that, or do I get exposure before I get there so I know how to make the decision when I get there? So if I don't try it and fail in private, this is why we can't excel in public. Go ahead and spend $10 on that. And be like, mm -mm, that ain't it, that ain't God. And keep finding what you can eat so when you get there. <laughs> Noah, you the man for the job. But what I'm calling you to do is bigger than you. Some of y'all hear me. You are under the influence of small. You are under the influence, and I don't say that in a, in, in a, in a condescending way. I just want to open your eyes. Question. We preach the gospel, and we say, this is gospel. Question. Can you take this message and take it to any other part of the world and make it work there? If you can't do that, it's not gospel. But what we've done as pastors and preachers We've preached a southeastern gospel. We've preached a Bible Belt gospel that don't work in New York. Because if some of y'all moved up north, y'all be like, whoa, hold on for a second. What's happening? These folk ain't saved. And then you will start kicking out stuff and they'll be like, that ain't even in the Bible. Because we become modern day Pharisees by giving, uh, giving y'all a bunch of rules that ain't even in the book. Uh, I'm, listen, we're going to be a free church. Be, we're, we're so limited. I remember, and I mean, it's no, I told y'all uh, that, you know, we bought this building. I, I had no experience in certain things and sitting down at certain tables. And I'm like, God, why am I here? I don't know what to do. I don't even know if I can make a contribution. God said to me, you're not here at this table to make a contribution. you at this table to learn. Some of y'all trying to talk where y'all should be listening. Because this table is getting ready to set up the next table where you're going to make the contribution. Noah, build this. God, I ain't never seen this before. Can God use us to build something that's never been seen before? Can God use you to build something that other people in your world and your community and in your circle has not seen before? Just because it's new to them don't mean it's new. And just because they're not willing to do it doesn't mean it can't be done. So you keep listening to people who won't do it. You, you are listening to people who won't do it. Tell you what you have a heart to do. And you don't do it because they said don't do it. But they ain't going to do it. That's why you're being pushed the way you're being pushed, because you're the one to do it. Touch your chest and say, God called me. Now, since he called you, how about you answer? 
Because it makes no sense for people to be calling you, you keep declining the call. As if God isn't going to call you back. God's leaving voice messages. You know you got a call in your life, don't you? You know it's time for you to make that change, don't you? You know it's time for you to clean up some, you know it's time to make a move. You know you got to, and you hear, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. The people come say, I know, I know, I know. But when are you going to answer? Because what you're saying is you're under your influence more than God's. Because God's plan doesn't line up with yours. Then, you, then you, the both of you are in an argument because you're like, God, listen, I don't want to do that. Hello, I didn't want to do this. This wasn't a career choice since I was six. But I'm doing it because God called me, and I realize I can't beat God. So I might as well do what he's called me to do and enjoy it while I'm doing it. And I love what I do, but there's no need. Because most people who are successful in doing it, you will look at them and you go, oh, my God, I wish I had their life. And you talk to them in private, and they would be like, man, please, this ain't what it looks like. Oh, I wish I could make the money they make. Do you know, can you handle the taxes? That come out the check. <laughs> you, you don't have no problems with the IRS right now. Because you have your exemptions. Work them. I ain't mad at you. But what happens when you get to a place where exemptions are no longer an option? Oh, they got four businesses. That's for tax purposes. This is too much. This this too much? It's a different world at a different level. God is trying to expose you. Noah, you're the guy to build it. Nobody's ever done it. I know, but you're the one who's going to do it. And I know you're going to do it. That's why I called you. Everybody else thinks he's crazy until it starts raining. Okay, let me say this, and I'm going to move on. A visionary, a visionary sees what's coming before it comes. Okay. Um, uh, Elder D, help me out right quick. Brother Strange. Yeah, okay. okay, so look, this is how this works. So go uh, stand over there by those steps right there. So, so now I'm walking with Elder D. I say, I see a man in a gray suit. God's going to bless us, and we're going to be able to to buy a gray suit, and we're going to have a black shirt, and and (laughs) I I see it clearly. You're going, Pastor, I don't see it. I don't see it. here's, Here's where you get discouraged. You're sharing your vision with someone who simply just don't have what you have in your head. So you're trying your best to explain. No, this is what I see. This is what I see. Don't you see it? And he's going, I don't see it. But what happens is, here it is. Here's where the leader turns on. Hey, I'm going this way. If you you believe what I told you, even though you don't see it, then follow me. Now, at this point, he makes a decision whether he will believe in what the person has communicated or not. Right? So here it is. Stay there. So if I say, man, I wish he could have come. He could have been a part of it. Man, because I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. And then now I come in contact with what I saw. He doesn't get it till I get here. But because some of y'all got problems with breakups. You, are un- you don't want to cause a separation. So now the question is, do your- is your influence your friend or is your influence your vision that God is giving you? And some of us, you are literally sabotaging your future because of your relationships with people who love you but just don't see what you see. It ain't that they demon possessed or devil work. They just don't see it. I see this, I see that. Some of you I don't see that. You don't have to see it. Only the leader has to see it. So the leader has to put faith in the people to say, if you believe me and you trust me, just follow me. You will see it when we get there. So now he says, this don't make no sense. This is crazy. I don't know what we're doing. As we go, he said, wait a minute. I didn't know that was going to happen. Okay. 
all right. I see we make a few more steps. He like, all right. I see them like, yeah, man, we doing this. Like, we doing this. Yeah, he's getting excited. I'm getting excited. But he's seeing, he, but he's only seeing what has been happening. He still hasn't, he still hasn't seen this yet. So as you come with that and you begin to get weak, sometimes God will use the person who still hasn't seen it to say, look, if God brought us this far, he's going to continue to push you because sometimes the visionary gets distracted by what he sees with the problems. And then the both of them keep walking and then the both of them see it. And they're like, we are here. We can experience it. And now we can touch it. We can embrace it because that's what a visionary does. So if you keep looking for people to confirm what they don't see, you are never going to move if you connected to people like that. What do you see? I see a business. I see this in my head. So they don't see it. So what you going to do? Just sit there because they don't see it? So you're sitting here, some of you, on a million dollar idea. But because nobody else around you see it, and I guess it's not, it's unattainable. I guess I can never do it. No, no, no. That's why you got to get the grit to say, I'm going to try it. And if it don't work, I'm going to find it because I tried it. But I'm not going to sit here with, a, with regrets of hoping that one day it could happen. And there's some of y'all right now, yes, some of y'all right now hating because y'all had ideas that y'all never moved on that somebody else took. And the only difference between them and you is they moved and you didn't. You were designed to solve a problem. What's the problem you've been created to solve? But the strange is in the finance arena. He's in the tax arena. You mess up with your taxes and you got a problem. You may not need to call him. He may know some. But he's going to tell you, no, 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 you need to talk to him because he's the problem solver. Come on, Michelle. So he's your tax guy who's going to solve your problems, right? Chandra, come here real quick. So then I'm trying to get a loan. I'm trying to get myself positioned to buy a home and everything finance. But it's strange to me the person you need to talk to. But then you got uh, a stalker. You need to talk to her. Because <laughs> she, she's the stalker solver problem person. <laughs> Okay, all right. You got, oh, I'm on, I'm on internet and I want people to know me and social media. Michelle's your person. Blanche, come here. Monique, come here. Angie, come here. So I'm, trying, I'm trying, trying to help you out. I'm trying to help you out. So here it is. So now you want somebody to sing at your wedding. Blanche the one. She may not want to sing at a wedding, but I'm just saying. She's the singer. Now, I'm trying to figure out what to wear to my event. Monique's your person. I'm trying to get things done administratively and put the pieces together. Angie, your, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people who just solved simple seven problems. What problems do you solve? You don't think, I don't have a gift, I'm not creative. You lying to yourself when you say you're not creative. You may not be an artist, that don't mean you ain't creative. Put the problem you've been created to solve in your hands and creativity comes out of nowhere because you have been designed to be creative to solve the problem you are called to solve. I'm preaching better than every spot in here today. I'm going to give myself an offering for this one. I'm, the, what have you been called to solve? I'm too old. Stop lying to yourself. Oh, I can't do that. You know, I don't, have a, I don't have a degree. So, you need a degree to start a business? You need a degree to, to write a book? You need a degree? No. Some of the things you think are limiting you, that's you. That's the influence God is saying, I'm trying to break the lid so that you can see. So, here it is. Some people, now look what I did. <laughs> My problem may be I'm the source. 
So you, so now she says, I have a problem. I'm trying to figure something out. I'm trying to do da da Oh, that's what you need? I'm a, I become a door. I become a door to say, this is what I have access to. Now, which one you need? Y'all not, y'all not here. <laughs> that's why some of y'all have all the relationships you have. Because you are a door. So be the best door you can be. Paint your door. Make sure the hinges don't get squeaky. Then put WD-40. It's easy to open. You have access. Shine the doorknob. Change the doorknob if you need to. Get a different grip. Do whatever you got to do, but be the best door you can be. But when you're under the wrong influence, you'll never use what God gave you because you don't think it's much. You want a sweet tooth? Holler at leader. You're trying to do some contractual business. You got Mario in the back. You, you have so many different people in this room who do so many different things. And you say, I don't have nothing to offer. Quit lying to yourself. You're under the wrong influence. This is why the church, hear me, this is why the church is designed to equip you to do what you're supposed to do, not always in here, but out there. Set up, Nate. Man, he has a testimony. Now, he has a professional job, married to a beautiful woman who has a beautiful voice. But he has a testimony. So when somebody says, my son, I don't know what to do with my son. He has a drug habit. He's doing all this stuff. He's in the streets. He's wilding out. I ain't calling none of them. I'm calling him because he knows the language of the struggle of the person in the street. He may not get a check for that, but what may happen is he's going to see life change because when he shows up, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he's anointing me. And that's not the only box he's supposed to be in. He's supposed to walk in rooms and say, look at me for people who don't believe in God and say, listen, God changed me. This ain't science. This is Genesis, the revelation, which you're looking at right here. I'm talking about the miracle power of God. Are you hearing me? What has God given you? Your homework this week is to figure out what do you do well? What makes you tick? What turns you on? And when I say turn on, I'm thinking about a light switch. What makes you light up? You see that? Something comes. All I've ever known was the same. I always wanted to be a singer. Well, I, I write songs. I have like 200 songs in a book at home. Listen, the person who make the music or make the money <laughs> ain't always the singer. It's the writer. Oh, I'm about, okay, I'm going to say this, and half of y'all going, y'all going y'all gonna to send emails and lead the church after this. So, is it wrong, Blanche, to, to, um, this is a song I like. It goes, um, the melody goes, open my eyes. Uh, Eric Benet and Tamir. Spend my life with you. Oh my God, he's just on R&B in church. We all going to hell. No, we're not. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so listen, listen. Is there anything wrong with that song? No. Nothing. Absolutely nothing wrong with that song. Everything in that song I would say to my wife in front of all of y'all. Come on. But what if you wrote that song? Well, I don't want to hear Blanche sing that. Blanche ain't got to sing it. Blanche could take that song and give it to someone else and let them sing it and she get the... See, I'm trying to tell you, your hair's limited. And she ain't writing nothing out of, that's, that's beyond the, the boundaries. I love my husband. He loves me. I love spending time with him. I love holding his hands. We walk to the park. I look at his eyes. I look at mine. Oh, we love each other. Blah, blah. That's it. Love. No. We, I grew up, R&B, you could not listen to. <laughs> that wasn't, come on, every song wasn't bad. I get it. It was, look, I don't want you to go too far, so I'm not going to let you go. I, I know why the teaching went, but there's nothing wrong with it. Right. Amen. So now you sitting here, 
and you can't go on a date because everything you're listening to is Jonathan Nelson, and I, I love Jonathan, no, no offense, and J.J. Harrison, can you get some Teddy P? Can you play some Luther? Can you play some Joe? Can you get some Anthony Hamilton? I'm gonna free you today. Can you play some jazz? Can you, just free. I'm gonna free you. Some of y'all saying, Pastor, that ain't my problem at all. I know, but some of us in the room. <laughs> you stuck. You can't even do the cubic shuffle. I'm like, oh, we're going to burn. Boom, boom. Oh, Lord, we're going to. No, what just. Go. <laughs> we so. Listen, here, I got to stop. I'm way over my time. Now. <laughs> You praying for me? So, 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 so this is why we messed up. This is why we messed up. The church has created an environment that is so restrictive that you saved an unhappy. You saved an miserable. Can't go nowhere, can't do nothing, can't smile. And the people who seem to not have Jesus enjoying life, and you trying to figure out why your kids hate church. I was somewhere yesterday <laughs> and saw one of the members and, uh, and where we were, um, Bruno Mars and Cardi B came on. And I looked at the member, I said, what you know about Cardi B? And she looked at me, she said, what you know about Cardi B? <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't live in a box. It's a limit that we put on people and we're so miserable. Look, we're going to walk through this. I'm going to stop with that. Y'all good? Let's give it up for everyone who came up who are my problem solvers. God has called us to solve a problem. You know why these guys up here, they solve a music problem. You solve a problem. And your problem is probably a money maker for you. And you're struggling about being broke when you have the idea to actually have money, additional strings of income to come to you. So this is why it's crazy to be jealous of people. Because there's way, there's way more out here you can do to be competitive because the only thing you know is Columbia when the person next to you may be thinking a nation. Does this make any sense? I want you to leave here today asking the question, what turns me on? What lights me up? What am I passionate about? Because that's the problem God has allowed you to see for you to solve. And when you don't get the opportunity to solve the problem you've been created to solve, it causes you to become frustrated and you look for opportunities to be the problem solver. Even if the opportunities are not given in the place that you were in, God will open up other doors for you to do it someplace else because the gift in you is not supposed to be contained into a certain place. I'm trying to help y'all. It's bigger than you. And I want you to leave here under the right influence. God gave him the plan. Build this. I'll, I'll deal with next week when people don't understand vision. And see what God, I'll deal with that next week. But today, we got to find out what problem you've been called to solve. Everybody stand to your feet. I'm way over time.